Dukesh Chandra, he said that the narratives on the four galleries were derived from Karma Vibhanga, Lalita Vistara, Jatakas, Avadanas, Avadana Shataka, and Gandhavipo. So there are various sources where, you know, squeezed to relief sculptures on the walls of the corridors. Now, I would like to go for the uh, slides now. You can see the ground plan and elevations of Barubadur. At the center, you have the closed tupas. The first town circle has 16 uh, lattice tupas. The second round has 24, and third is 32. And then you have four galleries. Now, on four sides of the galleries, there are stairs. You can go up from the four sides. And as per your wish, you can turn to the left or right of any gallery and enter to a gallery space. <coughs> this is a you know view of Borobudur in profile. The majestic Borobudur. Now you can see at the center, the closed tupas, and you can just see some of the, you know, uh, small stupas there. These are the galleries. You can see relief sculptures on one side and the other side. So the one side could be quite high, the other side is quite smaller and you can go around the galleries. So this gives you an idea how pilgrims they move through the galleries and gradually they go up, up, up until they reach the topmost level. Now in the uh, basement, the Barabadur artist reflected scenes from the sensuous life, scenes which are related to the erotic activities, passion, all these things, and also the results of your karma. If you do something wrong, you will be punished. These were depicted in the lower basement. Uh, this basement, for some time, it was closed. People thought because of the, uh, you know, things which should not be seen by general public, it was, it's not that. Actually, it happened that the structure became very weak. So in order to give more strength, the base was closed for some time. Now I'm told that that has been withdrawn. So you can see the reliefs of the basement where Indonesian artist, this scenes from the sensuous life, sexual life, everything's depicted in the lowermost galleries. Bit of sectional stones, you know, they didn't have long, you know, stone and slab. So they adjusted and worked out small uh, you know, pieces, could be hand in one particular piece, face could be in another particular piece, but they joined it so nicely that it becomes a complete image. Then from the first gallery to fourth gallery, you will find the everyday life, stories from the everyday life of the Indonesians, early Indonesians. Then 
you will also find different types of people, their morphological, facial, you know, features. And the way they move in the street. So this sort of common scenes from the life are shown and people are looking downwards on the road, what is going down below. All these things are very beautifully carved in the galleries. And this is a masterpiece. You see, every jewelry, everything, the expression of the eyes, the expression of the lips, and everything so nicely. And you can see the man was also hanging up. And see what care has been taken to show the hands. It's beautifully rounded, fleshy, yet very attractive. Then starts the story of the Buddha. Here you can see Maya Devi on a chariot is moving towards her father's place. And that moment has been, you know, shown here. And here you can see a scene how Siddhartha Gautama was married to his wife, Yashudara. So this is a marriage scene in the life of the Buddha. And then he leaves the palace. In Borobudur, you will find many trees sometimes shown, along with the relief sculptures, and uh, mostly mangoes and jackfruits are were very favorable to them, and they are shown. No. You can see this one that he has come near Buddha and he cuts his hair because there is a story uh, at this point of Buddhism that he did not uh, like to look like a prince, so he cut his hair and he gave away his royal dress and jewelry, his everything, because they are the attractions. So he wanted to get rid of these attractions. Now there is a story that when he cut these hairs, he did one thing that he <coughs> took the cutted hairs in his hands and his turban and he threw it in the void and said, if there be any chance of attaining salvation, those turbans and hairs will not come down to the earth. And to his utter surprise, he saw that they are not coming down. They are just floating in the void. And then he could feel that there is a possibility, perhaps. And then what happened? Uh, they his last attractions were his mount, Kantaka, the horse, and Chandaka. So he told them to go back because they were the last attraction which Siddhartha was having with him. Chandaka went back to the royal palace to inform his parents that he is going to become a recluse, but Kantaka did not return. He committed suicide in a pond, and then he became Deva Kantaka and went to the heaven. So here, the horse is the Kantaka on whose back he came all the way from his royal palace, and he is talking here with Chandak. And then uh, it is said that he 
undertook the life of a austere sadhu. He maintained austerity for about 49 days and then suddenly discovered that he has become skeletal and he looks horrible and this is not the way to attain salvation. So he stopped the austerity drive and he took the rice and milk from uh, this lady, Sujata, and here Sujata is offering him food and he has extended his hand to receive it. So it is that particular scene is shown from the life of the Buddha. Now after that, his friend left him because he has stopped austerities. So he had very good friends with whom he was moving for a long span of time. Bhappa, Bhadda, Ashwapi, Mahanam and Annakodan. They left him because he has stopped austerity. But he said, I'll try my best to get, you know, attainment. So he started meditating. And when he was about to attain salvation, he was challenged by an evil god called Mara. And you know, Mara Chata, you know, uh, did many things. He first tried to kill him. He wanted to create panic in him. So his army were sent to create that situation. But he remained, you know, quite alert and he did not, was not perturbed at all by the attack of the soldiers of Mara, and that has been shown here. But uh, then what happened? Mara, when he saw that his soldiers cannot do any harm, so he sent his beautiful daughters to entice Buddha and provoke him to leave the path of meditation. So it is that scene. So Mara asked his daughters, three daughters, Rati, Raga, and Tanha, to exhibit all their feminine charms to entice the Bodhisattva. They came in a body and made their utmost attempt to, by sweet words and by alluring movements of limbs to seduce the great saint. But all their efforts were no avail. The Vadishattva remained seated like a rock, unmoved, untouched. He at last mined and explained to them the evil effects of self enjoyments transient nature of worldly pleasures, lust as the cause of the repeated existences, and the body as the storehouse of filth and dirt. His words fell to the deaf ears of Mara's daughters, who made further attempts to seduce him in earthly enjoyments, but all their endeavors ended in a fiasco. Now, finally, the Mara made a very dangerous attempt. He said, O Bodhisattva, before you, many people attained Buddhahood. But those people who attained the Buddhahood, they could tell their previous birth stories. If you can tell me your previous birth stories, because you're a human being, you have come through a long process of evolution. So you can, if you can tell me the previous birth stories of your life, and if you can prove that in each and every birth, you have done good to your kings, 
the merits that you have acquired throughout these lives will help you to attain Buddha. So tell me your birth stories. So Buddha became perplexed. And at that time, he touched the earth because a flash came into his mind that whatever the life he took, he took on this earth and the mother earth must be having that record. So he touched the earth, remember mother, mother earth, to help him in this critical moment. And mother earth is said to have opened before his mental eyes all the stories of his previous births, which she went on narrating to Mara one after another. And Mother Earth went on saying, I am the witness, I am the witness. So in this way, he told Mara about 500 birth stories of his previous births. Then he became a Buddha from a Bodhisattva. So it is said that when he was meditating the, the last, in the last moment, the, the last night when he attended the celebration, in the first quarter, he received the knowledge of previous birth. In the first quarter of the night. In the second quarter of the night, he found the divine vision. He got the divine vision. And in the third quarter of the night, he was bestowed with the <coughs> Pratiya Samutpata Sutra, which means the laws of causation, in which he discovered that ignorance of truth, avidya, formed the basic cause of worldly sufferings. So, he came to know about the Anulamu Pratyasamutpada Sutra. He also learned the Pratilamu Pratyasamutpada Sutra. And then he became a Buddha. So 